Ski, there, ladies and gents, and welcome back to Halliborn with Mags, and welcome aboard the mighty MI8. So, the last time I did a video about Halliborn, I spoke about how the single player portion of the game is now in, in its first iteration. Today we're going to take a little bit of a look at the gameplay of that, and have a look at some of the updates to the most recent patch. So we are doing the single player here at the moment, I'm playing solo at this time. Now, how this actually works... The single player is played on a normal map that is present within Halliborn. Now these maps, you're competing against the AI. There are no AI helicopters. What you're playing is mission objective versus mission objective. So if you look in the top right hand corner of the screen at the moment, you'll see I have an objective to destroy enemy positions at zone 8, which is what I'm now doing now, starting to engage the positions with anti-tank guided missiles. But you'll also notice next to that objective there is a timer that is ticking down and a second objective which has popped up. If you look in the centre of the screen you'll see a timer for how long is remaining to actually complete this map. And you'll see two counters. On the right hand side there is an orange counter with 0 of 12. To the left there is a counter of 0 to 10. This is an objective counter, you versus the AI. To win in the single player or co-op game modes, you must complete all of your mission objectives before the enemy completes theirs. Each time you complete an objective, you obviously get a point towards your score, and you will get additional units spawn on the map, pushing your front line towards the enemy base. But every time you fail an objective, the enemy succeeds, and they get the same thing in return. Failing an objective, of course, simply requires that you do not complete it within the time that has been allotted to you. A surprising AAA gun hiding behind a building, didn't realise it was there, so that nukes it out of the way, and I'm going to capture 8 as a bonus at this time. And you'll see that I've now got two objectives on the top right hand corner. This is the difficulty level for the game. You can select the number of simultaneous objectives, the difficulty level that the AI will present you within the game, and the number of objectives that must be completed in order to complete the match. You get to set this right when you're creating the map. At the moment we're playing on medium difficulty level, mainly because I'm playing alone, with two simultaneous objectives and 12 objectives to complete the match. And that is a man pad launch, and I don't manage to dodge it, so I'm down to 8% on the MI8. This is really not good. The air defences can get quite intense around these bases. Now you get multiple mission types that you have to complete. For example, the ones we've just seen is to clear out a base and to capture it, if at all possible. That's a basic objective. Some are just to capture a base, whether or not you actually kill anyone in it is entirely irrelevant. You'll get other missions that are a little bit more specific, however. For example, there may be a convoy moving between two objectives. It could be your convoy, in which case you have to defend it, or it could be an enemy convoy that you will need to take down. And unfortunately, a man pad gets me there. But that's alright, I've got a Hind B floating around. The Hind B being one of the earlier versions of the Hind, with the big square shoebox style cockpit, rather than the twin bubble cockpits that we know from the later Hind models. It is, of course, a fantastic gunship, but we're going to make a strike here at 11. Now, the objective here at 11 isn't actually to capture the base. There is a series of units that are parked nearby that we must eliminate. Clearing out the base at 11 is just a bonus. And we can see we've got the three vehicles. They're just to the side of the base. I'm also taking uh, AAA fire from the enemy's runway, which is actually very close. As much as there are not helicopters, the runway is still active. So there's two of the ground units eliminated, and I'll swing it back around and pop the third one. One of the most difficult missions I've actually come across so far is something that you would think would be relatively simple. Hunting the infantry that are hiding in a particular section of the map in amongst the trees. Now the way the spotting mechanics work for Halliborn, certain units are more easy to detect than others, and infantry hidden in the trees are incredibly difficult to spot. Generally, they require a scout helicopter to be able to spot them, but of course, scout helicopters are relatively light in terms of defence, and a lot of these infantry groups can actually have multiple man pads hidden amongst them, making it extremely difficult to even approach them in the first place. Now, these are just some examples of missions that are currently active, and as I understand it, there are more missions that are planned to go in. And while the setup here is relatively simple, when you start getting three or four players up at once with four simultaneous objectives and and, you know, and over 20 missions that you need to complete in order to complete the match, things get quite hectic quite quickly. It doesn't take too much of a mistake for your team to suddenly find themselves losing four objectives at 
once, giving a massive chunk of points straight to the AI and putting you in a really bad position to actually take victory. In this case, I am now going to head back to base, drop the hind down onto the helipad and change helicopters for the next objective that I want to go after. So another thing that's worth noting as well is there has been a change to the flight characteristics of all the helicopters in the game. As it was noted previously and a few people didn't like it, the helicopters were very arcadey. They would sort of sit wherever you put them and they wouldn't wander and they wouldn't move. The flight modelling has been adjusted at this point. Maneuvering the helicopters around requires more using the mouse as you would the cyclic in a actual helicopter. So pushing forward on the mouse will dip the nose of the helicopter down to move forward. Alternatively, as I mentioned in the last video, joystick controls are now available so you can fly it that way as well. It also requires a lot more work on the engine with the helicopters being a lot less stable. They tend to slide around a lot now. It takes quite a bit to get them in order. If you get a little bit uh, heavy on the controls, you rush a little bit too far, you will find yourself in a world of trouble very quickly. Now as you would have seen just then, there is now another helicopter flying around. The single player missions can be set to be unlocked and open for drop in drop out co-op play if you wish them to be. In this case another player has just come across this match, jumped in with me, he is currently giving me some support as I'm clearing out team he's going to go off and try and clear out some of the objectives and you can see him flying ATGMs at the base defences just there. Winning a match in Heliborn in co-op play with these sort of settings, mostly playing alone, took me about 30 minutes total to actually complete a match, and I lost 5 of my 10 objectives. Could have done a little bit better, but I didn't have a particularly good scout helo to actually go and try and find those infantry groups that were hiding in amongst the trees, which made those missions a little bit more difficult to complete. But with the MI8 and the Hind on side, I had a hell of a lot of assault capabilities, so completing the general missions was relatively straightforward. So once you've completed a mission, you go into the new after action report. And what we've got here is our points earned 143. I will come to those in a moment. And it's a full breakdown of the mission. Number of deaths, our survival rating, the number of sorties we actually flew, number of ground units that we actually destroyed, broken down into soldiers, man pads, ground vehicles, base defences and so on. So you can see exactly how well you did within the match. You can also check out your squadron and see exactly which helicopters performed best in comparison to others. Last of all, you now have the combat log, which fully breaks down every action that you took during the entirety of the match. So you can see everything in clear detail. So we'll skip out of here and we go to the new thing that popped up in the most recent major patch. The progression tree. Now as you can see at the top of the screen, this is only for demonstration, there is no vehicle unlocks at this point, but this is the first example of the tech tree that has been made available to those checking out the game. Now you don't have to worry about the grind too much in Halliborn, I'm not sure how accurate the information is now, the last time I spoke to Rain about this it was some time ago, but I believe they were looking at somewhere in the vicinity of 10 hours to unlock a tree. There are two trees in the game, one for Soviets, one for the Americans, so about 20 hours to get access to every vehicle that is currently within the game. So once we step out of the new tech tree, we can go over to the career profile. Now I haven't been playing enough of Halliborn since the most recent patch, unfortunately, but what we can see here is the number of battles you have, your current rank, which increases based on your performance within the missions, the ribbons and awards you earn, which you can put on display permanently for anybody who wants to check out your profile, as well as your helmet. Your helmet serves as your avatar in Halliborn and can be skinned up in particular ways depending on what you unlock within the game, with new stickers and skins becoming available. And as you can see, this is not something that I've modded in. There is actually a Mags TV skin available within the game. I'm honestly kind of blown away by this. I'm not entirely sure on the details on how to unlock it yet, but new helmet skins and stickers for your helmets can be unlocked over the course of your gameplay. And you have the option of choosing between the Russian helmet in the white or the army green American APH5 helmet as your base avatar. Additional helmets may be unlockable as well as time goes on. So you'll have the option to choose between combination of skins, stickers and helmet types to customize your avatar. So with the addition of the career and profile page as well as the first example of the tech tree coming into play, all of the final pieces for Halliborn are now coming together together nicely. I doubt there will be too much longer until we start going into the final phase of development and the polish 
pushing and balancing, optimizations and so on that happens right near the end before we start looking at a potential release. I'll keep you updated on this, of course, as time goes on. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video, and thank you very much for watching. As always, remember to click that like button, subscribe if you want to see more, and until next time, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.